Hey guys, welcome to Offbeat Worlds. I'm Stephanie Brown and I'm a creative nerd. So Dungeons and Dragons has become a very big part of my life in the last couple of years and for a number of reasons. It all started two years ago right after Comic Con 2016 when my con family people who I always hang out with at Comic-Con invited me to join them in a group cosplay for this show called Critical Role. Now I'd never heard of Critical Role before, I didn't really know what it was, but I agreed to go along with the cosplay group because the character that they had assigned me was really cool looking. And I started watching the show. Oh. My. God. I'll take my clothes off. You can't do that. Oh no, what is it? Slowly. Do it. Do it. I'm organizing my dice right now. Oh, but I counterspelled it at eighth level. Ooh. <laughs> it's cocky. <laughs> Have some seashells and a skipping rock. <laughs> <laughs> we're gods. Would you say we're that gods? Would Why would you even tempt that shit? <laughs> <laughs> they seemed legit. They seemed like they were street kids. Oh, I didn't know that. that was legit. <laughs> I am so very proud of you. He's fine. He's dumb. <laughs> I love him so much. I love him. You're right. Hey, oi! Your stupid idea cut my hand. <laughs> you know you're getting weirder. For those of you who don't know what Critical Role is, it is a show where a bunch of nerdiest voice actors play Dungeons and Dragons for about three to four hours every Thursday night. Is it Thursday yet? And it is just an amazingly awesome show. It's got improv, it's got humor, it's got romance, it's got adventure, it's got epicness. So good. They've already done a complete campaign that lasted about 115 episodes. They're on their second campaign now. And it's just a really awesome show. Can you tell I'm obsessed a little bit? So beyond doing the cosplay for Critical Role, which was amazing by the way, we did it for Comic-Con last year, 2017, I dressed up as a character named Keyleth, who is a half-elf druid, and my friends were Vex, Vax, Percy, and Scanlan. It was just really, really fun. We went to the Tox Machina panel, we met up with a bunch of other Critical Role fans, it was just really, really fun. On top of that, I have also done a big Critical Role fan art from the first campaign where I painted all of the characters in this big illustration. <laughs> which I then submitted to Tox Machina, which is the Critical Role talk show, for Fan Art of the Week, and I won. This week's winner was sent in by Stephanie Brown at Offbeat Worlds, and it's pretty incredible. Let's take a look. Nice. Stephanie uh, Brown, very nice. I approve. Oh, I love this. Oh. I love it. Oh, look at the glowing. Oh. All of it. Look at Keyleth. I, I know, I'm like, gorgeous. kind of on fire. And look at your, like, below. pentagram. I love that Scanlan. Like yes. I love that the so hand is gorgeous. flicking the bird. Yeah. It's, I love Fendris, too, yeah, where it's like the stag head. That's really cool. So Good badass. Thing. That's rad. And for winning the fan art of the week, I won this and this. This is a dice tower, this is a dice vault, and it's signed by the cast of Critical Role, which is really, really cool. But when I got it, it was signed by everybody on the cast except for one person. Somehow, when this was getting passed around to get signed by everybody, Liam O'Brien was missed, and he didn't sign it. So I got in contact with him on Twitter, and I met up with him back in January, like a few days before I was moving from LA, and I got him to sign this for me, and this. Uh, so he signed it right there. It was really awesome meeting him. He was so, so, so nice. Gave me a hug and threatened to take my dog. <laughs> I had my dog with me at the time. Anyway, so that was really cool. And I also have this Mox Mock in a dice bag with the D20s inspired by all the characters from Critical Role, the first campaign. Also, I just don't have enough dice. Like, I have those dice, and then I have like all of these dice. Maybe I have a lot of dice. I'm trying to give Laura Bailey a run for her money. It's actually kind of funny that I like Critical Role and Dungeons and Dragons as much as I do because I haven't actually really been able to play it that much, which is sad. The first time I learned how to play Dungeons and Dragons, well, actually Pathfinder, but the mechanics and rules are kind of pretty much the same, so it's it's similar enough. Don't don't at me, guys. <laughs> but the first time I learned how to play it, the person who was teaching me didn't really 
do a good job explaining how the mechanics worked and everything, so I got kind of really confused and didn't really enjoy it as much as I probably could have. But since getting into Critical Role and watching hours and hours and hours of these actors playing Dungeons and Dragons, I get the rules now. <laughs> and I really, really, really want to play. However, time and getting people to coordinate is proving to be very difficult. I just haven't had a lot of opportunity to. However, that did not stop me from buying the player's handbook. I'm also going to get the other books eventually too, because why not? However, there have been some instances of being able to play some short games. So for instance, at Comic-Con last year, after we had cosplayed as characters from Critical Role, we actually all went down to the pool at the hotel and played a one-shot of us as the characters that we had been cosplaying as. So these are, this is my character sheet from that. And it was really, really fun. And thank you, Margaret, for putting that together. Kind of secretly hoping it happens again this year. On top of that, whenever our Blue Pulse team goes on a road trip, which happens somewhat frequently, we do this thing called D&D Light, where we'll play a one-shot of Dungeons and Dragons, but without the character sheets and dice rolls and stuff. So we're really loose with the rules, it's just a way to pass the time while we're in the car. I have this one character that I've played for the first session for two different campaigns, and I haven't been able to play her beyond that just because of being able to coordinate good times for everybody and, or not having the time. But she's this tiefling druid that I made named Erezu, and I made a whole binder with all of her stats and character sheets and background and everything and her her spells and all of that stuff. I haven't been able to play her and I'm really, really sad. I also painted this art of her and I really like how this turned out too. So there's that. Also, this is what happens when you move temporarily and you need to keep all your boxes because you know you're going to be moving again soon. Box collection. Yay. But speaking of painting Dungeons and Dragons characters, that's actually something I've been doing a lot of lately. I've done them once or twice before I gotten into Critical Role, but ever since getting into Critical Role and then also going full-time and freelance, I've been doing them a lot more. Especially lately because I had a character that I had done as a commission of a little, little foam wizard. She went a little bit viral in uh, the Critical Role and Dungeons and Dragons Facebook groups both groups. Mini viral. It wasn't like full on viral, but she did very well and I got a lot of commissions from that, which is awesome. I love doing Dungeons and Dragons characters. It's really, really fun. So I was very excited about that. But today I thought I would do something a little bit different and go back to doing Critical Role fan art and I would paint a portrait of a character from the new campaign. But first, I need some coffee. Would you like some coffee? going to paint Caleb for this, but um, no offense to Caleb, but he is just a human and I paint humans all the time. So I decided to challenge myself a little bit and paint Jester instead because she's got the blue skin and the blue hair and the cute little breast. Basically, she's just the most cutest. Also this week can just kind of be a little bit of a celebratory congratulations gift because Laura and Travis just had a little baby. Congratulations, by the way, you guys. Are so awesome. Anyway, let's get started on this. Lightning strikes by my window. It's my chest right in the morning. Wait a second. Jester is blue. Why did you put down purple for her skin tone? I did that because she has red blood. At least I assume she has red blood. This is just kind of a base color to work from. Obviously I'm going to be adding blue into her skin and that'll be happening next as I start, you know, building shadows and highlights and all that stuff. So that's why, that's why I made her purple. <laughs>
ta-da! Finished duster. Probably looks kind of weird on the screen, but I hope you guys like how that picture turned out. I really adore Jester as a character, and I really wanted to try to capture her personality in that picture, and I think I succeeded. I'm probably gonna wind up doing the rest of the characters eventually. I don't know when, because it's time. Don't have a lot of it. But I'm pretty sure soon I will have portraits of all of the Mighty Nine. Anyway, it's getting kind of late here. Uh, I spent a good time working on that picture, so I'm just gonna stop now. If you liked this video, hit that like button, smash it if you want to. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and talking about nerdy stuff and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye! Wow.